your service, sir. Bring us there, taxi. Nothing to report. Bring us there, taxi. όσο πιο σύντομα γίνεται.
Strategie. Was erzählt es Männer? Bitte, nicht schießen! Obliesmeni, geht ihm in Achse Kinesumen. Gun ready. Gun ready. Οπλισμένοι και έτοιμοι να ξεκινήσουμε. Must 
Τότε όταν ο Μουσολίνη είπε πως θα σπάσει την πλάτη της Ελλάδας. Δεύτερη δημιουργία, φύγαμε! Λατρεύω τη μυρωδιά της φωτιάς το πρωί. Waiting for orders. Roger. Yes, sir. Reverse. I keep facing the enemy. Ever can I Προχωρήστε the ambush, όπως κάναμε στον Αβλώνα. Πηγαίνουμε εκεί. And your orders. Reverse. I keep facing the enemy. Let's have a smoke out, mates. Holy. Έχουμε διαταγές, άντρες. Φεύγουμε. Δεν έχω να αναφέρω τίποτα. Θα κάνουμε το καλύτερο δυνατό, κύριε. Κύριε. What's up, Captain? Αυτό το μέρος μου θυμίζει το... Καλό! Να σε κάνω! Σκάστε και ακούστε τον αρχηγό! Αχ! Τρυπήθηκα!
position. Everybody up. Sir, yes, sir. Fix bayonets. Line on me. Get down. All in, sir. Let them get in.
sir. Fix bayonets! Yes. 
speed, driver. Ready, sir. Fixed bayonets. Line on me. Ready, 
character. But then he grew up and had kids, and well, I guess Shark Boy and Lava Girl does things to a man. Evidently, directing kiddie shows can be hazardous to your career. You get a case of the cutesies, and after that, your action directing gets as limp as a Tijuana donkey all out of Viagra. But I digress. Now, at this point, I'd like to stress that this is a walk-in source. In other words, not a source that went through and was vetted by my Hollywood spies. So I have no way of knowing if this individual is providing disinformation or has some kind of agenda I'm not privy to. So when I get information like this, I evaluate it as best as I can, going over the backstory, matching the info against what I already know and my own observations. What does logic tell me about what this source is saying? So at this point, I will tell you that what I'm about to present to you is information provided to me by an individual claiming to have knowledge of the situation. But since I cannot personally confirm what I'm sharing with you today, I ask you to consider this unverified rumor and to take it with a teaspoon of salt. That said, this information is rather compelling. To protect the source, I have to obscure a lot of what they told me about how they came up with this information but I can say that this person has extensive contacts with people in the industry, and in particular, a large number of people who worked on Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. And as people do, sometimes they let their guard down and talk. The source says that in their circle, while initially people were hesitant to speak about the Book of Boba Fett since a lot of their mutual acquaintances, quote, either worked on Boba or Mando, or are friends with people who did, and no one likes talking bad about our friend's work, even though you can only do the best you can with what you are handed." Unquote. However, once the show was finished and had aired, tongues loosened, and this is the tale that emerged. My source claims, quote, The word is that much of the fault with this show actually lies with Robert Rodriguez as much as anyone else. Paraphrasing what was said, Rodriguez did an amazing job on his episode of Mando, then once he got Boba, he fucked off and was rather lackadaisical in his approach. Storylines, plot points, bad new characters, and a desire to put things he thought were cool in, whether or not they fit right or disrupted things, caused as many problems in production as anything else. Now, after the performance of Book of Boba Fett, and the reactions to those things by the fans, his future involvement will be throttled back significantly. For what it is worth, you've probably heard these things already, but these are from first-hand sources of people with big credits on the shows." Unquote. Intrigued, I followed up and asked this source, how could Rodriguez be the one at fault here? It was feeling to me like this could possibly be spin to put the blame on a scapegoat, possibly even away from KK loyalists or even KK herself, so I was curious as to how this could come to pass. I asked the source, was Favreau AWOL? Did he just turn it over to Rodriguez and go work on other things? After all, Favreau is given script credit on these episodes, so what? Did Rodriguez diverge from the script? Or did Favreau just hand him an outline with parts that were scripted and other parts telling Rodriguez to improvise, as he did in the Mando Season 2 episode where Rodriguez had to fill 10 plus minutes extra with just a broad outline of the action? The source replied with further explanation, quote, In general, what I heard was that the main story was there, more than an outline, but Rodriguez tried to shoehorn in all these things he thought were cool, like the mods slash Vespas. That is 100% on him, and him trying to continue with those characters is one of the reasons he's been cut. He is putting his own stuff over Star Wars themes, etc., which is a no-go for Filoni and Favreau now. The exact word used about Rodriguez's participation on Book of Boba Fett was lackadaisical. He got his prize, and then half-assed it. He concentrated on his stuff, not the Star Wars elements, and a lot of his stuff took away from the main story. Over three episodes, that focus changed a lot of the overall arc. What I hear is that he chose to emphasize, quote, his parts slash ideas, unquote, and in that way derailed much of the story, and his lackadaisical approach led him to the bad directing we saw on the screen. Unquote. 
After this source told me they try to get more info regarding the script and who had input on it, they continued with further explanation of how Rodriguez allegedly messed up. Quote, Playing fast and loose on set and emphasizing what you want to or not can seriously alter what ends up being shot and definitely limits what an editor can do with it, though. These guys have been very tight-lipped, though. If a spoiler got out during production, they'd be shot. Talking smack afterwards has been a little more open, however. Unquote. I was then told some things I can't really reveal without risking doxing this source, but the level of detail here was impressive, leading me to believe this story is, if unconfirmed, at least plausible, albeit with my aforementioned cautions. The source then elaborated further on what allegedly went wrong during production. Quote, Book of Boba Fett really was a disappointment. Apparently, part of the issue with Disney was that deadlines were a main problem in that they had to be met, and by the time certain issues were realized, it was too late. On paper, everything looked good. Imagine if the Vespa chase scene had come across like something from Baby Driver or Six Underground. Knowing Rodriguez and all his other work, that's what everyone thought they were going to get, not Back to the Future 2 in slow motion. The Vespas don't lean, they don't go fast, there is no threat. They run through a painting and get a load of fruit dumped on someone. This was made for three-year-olds." Which was exactly my thought as I was watching this nonsense unfold. I mean, watching Book of Boba Fett, I felt like I was watching the shark boy and lava girlization of Star Wars. The dissonance of the stylistic elements like the cheesy mods, the sparkling clean Vespas on a desert planet, it did indeed feel like a clashing of elements, Favreau's elements not meshing at all well with Rodriguez's elements. I was really taken aback at how weird this show was, kind of like Two-Face in the Batman comics. It's like, will this episode of Book of Boba Fett suck? Oh, flip a coin. And the scarred side mostly came up. Quality should not be a coin flip, Harvey. But let's move on. Darth Shark Boy is not the way to move Star Wars forward, and after this performance, Rodriguez's involvement in Star Wars